We're going to go live to Los Angeles now, where Sam Rubin has all of the latest news from Hollywood. Good morning, Sam. Hey, Sam. Good morning to the two of you. A melancholy morning here in Los Angeles as we continue the reverberations from Matthew Perry's very, very unexpected passing, a funeral on Friday, a very emotional affair. And interestingly enough, the place of burial literally steps away from where Friends was filmed. The Warner Brothers lot is in Burbank. The Forest Lawn Cemetery uh, overlooks uh, Burbank from the Hollywood Hills. So it was uh, particularly uh, emotional and moving that uh, the five remaining uh, friends of, of the original cast all attended uh, the burial, again, within view of the soundstage where they uh, taped the show. Uh, Matthew's family, of course, uh, his uh, mother, stepfather, and uh, birth father, all there, his stepfather being the Canadian broadcaster Keith Morrison, who's very, very well known here in the States. So there's that. And then this is an interesting uh, twist to all things involving Matthew. As we know, he passed away a week ago, Saturday. The day before, the day before on Friday, he had a lunch date with a young beauty pageant contestant. Uh, there they are photographed at the Bel Air Hotel. Um, her name, um, Athena Crosby. Athena, uh, after that photo came out, sort of identified around the world. Uh, and decided to appear on our morning show in Los Angeles. And she recalled the luncheon, and most importantly, she recalled the state of mind that Matthew was in. She said he, she felt that he was on the verge of a comeback. Watch this. Not only was he okay, but he was happy. He was doing great. He was sharing with me that he wanted to start his own foundation to help people through recovery. He also wanted to get back on screen and uh, be an actor again. Mm. I've heard some really crazy theories about what possibly transpired the day before. And I'm really just here to clean all of those theories up and say I was a friend. I'm here to defend his reputation. He was sober, he was clean. Um, his behavior was amazing. And I'm really here just to preserve his legacy and put all those speculations to rest. So this was the important thing that, that she wanted to really uh, make as clear as possible that she felt Matthew Perry was in a very good place. Um, also, uh, very late uh, last week, the announcement of the Matthew Perry Foundation. This is something that he had been working on prior to his passing. But, you know, there's, there's so much uh, emotion all around the world. And, and what can people do? Well, one thing people can do now is go to MatthewPerryFoundation.org. There's an opportunity to donate if you're so inclined. And uh, Matthew, of course, donated several of his own personal resources, including a home in Malibu, to the idea of helping people in recovery. So he's been a very active member, obviously, of the sober community for some time. And uh, as he said uh, in his own words, while we obviously bring up friends and talk about friends all the time, he wants to be remembered for much more than friends. Mm -hmm. And I think the legacy of this foundation will very much help to accomplish that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That. yeah, what a legacy to you. Mm -hmm. Thanks mm -hmm. for that, Sam. Um, let's go to Las Vegas, shall we? Uh, you two have been absolutely smashing it at the Sphere for the past few months. Mm -hmm. uh, but Kylie started her residency this week. Uh, indeed, two different acts and two different venues. I went to that opening of you two at the Sphere, which I cannot rave about enough. The venue's amazing. They are the perfect band to play that 18,000 seat theater. Let's go to a smaller venue at the Venetian, a thousand seats. And Kylie Minogue, who's always been massive in the UK, massive in Australia, never quite as big here, but you know what? This residency sold out the minute it was announced and the reviews have been nothing but raves. A 75 minute show, singing, dancing, and hit after hit after hit. Very happy audiences, look at this. It was never not going to be a good show, no, was don't. it, Sam? I mean, it was never not going to be good. Well, you know, what she has talked about is uh, for somebody such as Kylie, who's played arenas all around the world, so usually for 20,000 people or more, that a 1,000-seat venue is much, much more intimate. And, and again, people, 
you know, and she has these enormous, uh, you know, huge uh, fans in, in a variety of places, have never seen her in a place like this. And so I think it's a particularly satisfying experience, not only for the fans, but as Kylie has now said for herself, she loves playing this venue. It's got about 20 more dates scheduled. I think she will add additional dates given the incredibly positive reaction yeah. uh, to this okay. almost cabaret-like performance, such yeah. an intimate venue. She can own any room though, Kylie, can't it. she? She's yeah. just got that thing. Uh, Barbara Streisand, talk to us about her. She's talking about her memoir. Barbara Streisand in her 80s now, 81 years old, doesn't look it. Uh, sitting down with Gail King, talking about this new book, It Drops Tomorrow. And in the book, she talks about her career as a singer, as an actress, as a director. And I don't want to say a career as a lover, but uh, the many men uh, that Barbara Streisand has known, uh, you'll hear her talk about that. And then I'll tell you a little bit about how Prince Charles was mm, kind of on that list. Look. Oh. You have a very impressive dating roster, if I may say. I'm bowing down to you. Mm. There's Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, there's Don Johnson, there's Ryan O'Neill, there's Andre Agassi. I know, I'd laugh too if I had all those guys. So I would like to Listen, know. I didn't want to write about any of them. But you did. My editor said, you have to leave some blood on the page. I said, I Listen, I like knowing that Barbara had a very nice dating roster. I like that myself. Did you have a good time? With the men in my life, yes. Yes. All right, uh, and of course, a, a 20 plus year marriage uh, to James Berlin. But let me read this to you directly from the page about Prince Charles. She revealed she didn't realize that utterly charming Prince Charles fancied her when they met. They had a flirty relationship in uh, their youth. He even sent her flowers. The king is said to have described Barbara as, quote, devastatingly attractive with great sex appeal. So wow. maybe the okay. one. That Kids, if you're wondering what uh, all that means, is kind of the old version of Snapchat, basically. <laughs> <laughs> they were snapping each other, right, they Sam? Were that's what's going on. They were on. snapping. Um, talking about a very modern public uh, figure at the moment who's got a big relationship with Travis Kelsey. It's changing the world of the NFL. But Taylor Swift, everything she touches <gasps> turns to gold at Doesn't the moment, Sam. Yes. Everything. Solid gold. This is now, of course, we're talking about billionaire Taylor Swift. The movie, an extraordinary success here in the States and elsewhere around the world. The tour resuming soon, conquering South America. And then, of course, she heads uh, throughout Europe, uh, Australia and elsewhere. So that's Taylor Smith, the performer. How about Taylor Smith, the recording artist? The 1989, which is one of my favorite albums, the new Taylor's version has dropped. Best selling album uh, in the UK fastest selling record uh, in the UK for 2023, uh, only eclipsed in terms of single sales by the Beatles' uh, new release, which is understandable. Other than that, uh, number one here, the original 1989 won three Grammy Awards, including Album of the Year. Uh, will she be eligible for Grammy consideration again? She did record it, it is her work. So that's gonna be an interesting thing the Recording Academy is gonna have to deal with. And then you mentioned Travis Kelsey, as everyone does in talking about Taylor. She, Taylor Swift, has ignited interest in the NFL, always America's most popular sport, but never more popular. And the Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, Travis Kelsey, those jerseys flying off the shelves. People have tried to calculate the, quote, value of publicity of this uh, Taylor, Kelsey, uh, uh, Travis romance. Uh, it's, it's incalculable. It's wow. in, and then the one thing we could calculate is her overall wealth now, thanks to the tour, top grossing tour of 2023. Taylor Swift minted now a billionaire. And when you consider how much she's accomplished and how young she is, it's extraordinary. It's the most remarkable thing. She's she seemed, just yeah, a powerhouse. She's and she seems she's like a great absolutely person brilliant. as well. Yeah. She's the kind of public figure you're happy with your kids following and looking I just up feel to like you anything like she tries her hand to, she'll be great at. Yeah. Yeah? I like to see it. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Thanks so much. Thank Travis you. Kelsey, his jersey sales within a week mm -hmm. of announcing his relationship with Taylor Swift, his jersey sales went up 400%. That's that the Taylor is effect. the Taylor effect <laughs> there you right, go. There, right there. Thank you, Sam.